pop up right, along, right away, a Bridgeport mill and two lathes that were horse traded. Uh, and the problem with putting things in these transportation containers is they're kind of narrow. So you, you can't, you, you gotta, there's an etiquette in our machine shop. You never walk behind a machinist because you can knock him into his work. Uh, he's got his hand spinning there, so you gotta be careful about that sort of thing. The other nice thing about transportation containers is that you can walk them up really good. And they cost between zero and $4,000 uh, depending on when you're negotiating. So we've got a lot of them and we've got them organized because every piece and part you take off better have a tag and a write-up and, and a number that we can go find and a location we can find because this is like this gigantic three-dimensional puzzle. It's, it's a plumber's nightmare. And the guy who took the part off 10 years ago has got Alzheimer's and no point in asking him where it is or what he did with it or what it is. We get a lot of free stuff. I hate free stuff. Um, <laughs> Sally came from Cutter Aviation and only cost $3,000 to make it barely run. Uh, Nelly Bell is a similar acquisition. We've got a little more money in Nelly. Uh, but there are some things you just have to have a forklift for. We also have, uh, for you Sandia folks, an old Sandia resident. Uh, it's called a shuttle wagon officially, but we call it Lurch. It's rated at 1,300 tons on the flat. You can't make up its mind whether it's a little switch engine or a truck. It'll do 20 miles an hour in sixth gear down 4th uh, Street. Shaking a lot when it does that, but we use it to pull the locomotive back and forth as we need it. We got a refrigerated box car that doubles as our so-called education center. It was free, except for the fourteen hundred dollars to move it. The telephone pole that got knocked over, and the three hundred fifty yard, uh, three hundred fifty dollar trash trailer that we had to fill up with the stuff that was in it. And let's see, the wiring and the heating and the cooling and the floor and the shelving, but it was free. We built our own crane. Um, <coughs> Uh, we have a civil engineer in the group, thank God, and some pretty good people at fabricating. So right on the front end, we built a crane. There's just way too many things that are up on top that you can't unbolt and tuck under your arm and hop down. You need a crane. It's also a good place uh, to put some pick points for safety harnesses uh, so that if you're at 17 feet up there doing something and you slip and take a dive, you go six feet at the end of your, your ball collection. We've got some fun things too. We discovered that we had along the way the four dirtiest places in Albuquerque. The water cistern on the tender was unbelievably filthy. The oil bunker, the firebox, and the smoke box were incredibly dirty places. And we actually started, uh, because of one guy who had a pension for becoming very dirty, we started a pig pen award. So if you see this on the back of somebody's helmet, we have caught them being extraordinarily filthy. And we have standards. <laughs> <laughs> and the little grease on your hands won't, won't cut it. We also had a special award for those who work in our pit. We had to build our own pit, too. Uh, every time you whack something while you're standing in the pit, things shower down upon you from above. And after a day of that, and it's in your eyes, and your eyes get red and you get irritated, uh, we refer to you as a pit rat. So we got a patch for your uniform. We've got a logo that goes on the back of the jackets and things like that. It's, we had to play club. This is a society. I didn't believe that when the group was named Society, but it really is. It's a group of people in a common effort who actually pretty much get along with each other. And we have cats. We have little girl cats that, that will watch us from a safe distance and people go down and feed them and pick up after them and water them and that's boots on the ground as a security system by having extra people around taking care of our cats. And they go on the website and make comments like, are you guys ever going to get that throttle bracket done? Yeah. disparaging remarks to us every <laughs> <laughs> We are officially connected now with the Federal Railway Administration, the FRA. Um, when you deal with the FRA, you, you can't officially do that until you have what are called reporting marks. Reporting marks are four letters. If you do not own tracks, the last letter is X. So if you see a tank car that says TTLX, that's a company that owns tank cars, and lets railroads rent them and use them. So we had to end with X. And uh, New Mexico Rail Runner was already NMRX. So it's like, damn, we can't have that one. So we thought about it and thought about it and finally came up with New Mexico Steam X for New Mexico Sex. And now we can officially, it's like a license plate that we present to the FRA when they inspect. And that goes on all the documents. And that's us uniquely. We don't own the tracks. When we got this locomotive, we decided that basically it would be smart, since none of us yahoos had ever worked on this kind of thing before, do the tender first. A, it would look stupid to finish the locomotive and not be able to 
couldn't use it because the tender wasn't ready. And B, it would be simpler and we'd get our system down and we'd get our way of doing things together and our reporting system. So let's try to do the tender first. And it looks great now. Actually, we discovered that that 24 and a half thousand gallon water cistern is crisscrossed with baffles, none of which had ever been cleaned, all of which had a heavy load of calcium carbonate precipitated on the walls. It was as thick as my hand. We pulled three tons of calcium carbonate out of that thing, caliche, same stuff that ruins your, your pipes at home. And I had to do that because if it breaks off a chunk and falls into the water intake, you might not get water into the locomotive. Yes, ma'am? Yes, a tender is that big square car that fits behind the locomotive that carries its supply of fuel and water. Uh, without which, the locomotive is like a car without a gas tank. Uh, in this case, you have to haul them both around with you. And, and so the 24 and a half thousand gallon water cistern, uh, which is accessed through hatches in the top and then you crawl through it. Uh, you know why they have jungle gyms and schoolyards? Is to train you to crawl around inside the tank. <laughs> And they get dirty in the process, but we've got that cleaned out. Then it turned out there is a big oil bunker, which holds about 7,000 gallons of oil. In the original application, it was bunker C, now called fuel oil number six. And at the bottom of the cracking tower, the really, really thick, heavy, gooey stuff, on a cold winter day, it's actually bunker chapstick. And you have to heat it up to make it flow. But it had good heat content, only a penny or two a gallon in 1944. Uh, so it was very popular. They still use it in marine diesels and that sort of thing. Uh, these days we won't do that. We'll diesel, uh, filtered used motor oil, light sweet crude, except Conoco's not donating to nothing to nobody now. Uh, cheap French, French perfume, it doesn't really care. Good booze. Well, it turns out that they left Bunker C in the fuel can and after 50 years, Anything that was still volatile was gone. So what we had was bunker asphalt, which meant dissolving it with uh, kerosene and then sending guys like divers in with supplied air suits to muck the stuff out. So that was another really good place to get dirty. One trip per supplied air, air suit. I mean, they were just destroyed in short order. With that done, uh, we had uh, uh, crane service uh, donated a lift and pulled the, the funny shaped oil bunker out of the thing for us so we could work on it. And then the same guy who pulled us out of the park came back in 2004, uh, the night of a 100 year rain, it was a horrendous drive. I made it with them from Texas and they brought two cranes and lifted the tender up and took the body and put it on cribbing on one side and took the big four axle trucks and put them on a little scrap of track we built so that we could address the, the brake system, rebuild the, uh, their wear plates and new springs had to be made and that sort of thing. Everything had to be cleaned and painted. We discovered that there's a lot of stuff. You want to talk quality? Anybody ever use rust bullet? At $150 a gallon, you, you know you're using something expensive. The Navy buys it by the 55 gallon drum, it turns out. At, at our place, though, it's free because rust bullet likes us. And you know, a gallon here or there doesn't bother them at all. We had to, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't sand blasting, it was copper slag blasting to clean off the tender. And we've been making these steps with the whole thing disassembled. And uh, the time came when everything was ready to go back together. And I thought, oh, this isn't going to be easy. The problem is, once you get the two four axle trucks sitting on the track, and you need to put the body of the tender back on top of them, the bolsters that capture these two things have about a quarter inch play. You can't plug it into one and then walk it over into the other. They both have to capture at the same time. And I thought, we're going to be at this all day. It turns out that our riggers were careful enough and our measurers were careful enough. We had the tender body in the air for 24 minutes and plugged wow. both bolsters on the first try. It was like, this is great. That's uh, better than they did the shops originally. Probably. After that, putting the fuel can back in, it was no big deal. By noon time, uh, the, the cranes were gone and we were eating enchiladas. So. Got it painted, got it temporarily lettered with these are not quite the right font. Everybody familiar with the concept of a foamer or a rivet counter? Yeah, I am one. Are you now? I was, gonna, I was specifically going to ask you about the size of the lettering on the side of the tender. It's incorrect. Yeah. Uh, but we have the correct stencils, and we 